One of the reasons that the turn of the last century time period, just before 1900 into the 1920s and 30s, is so interesting to me to look at, with everything from gear, accoutrements, firearms, knives, no matter what it is, is that that's really when companies started to create items specifically for recreational outdoor activities. Prior to the Industrial Revolution and prior to that late 1800s period, people were in a wilderness environment because they had to be, not because they wanted to be. And they relied on the things that their fathers taught them or their grandfathers taught them or the gear and accoutrements that they were issued during the Revolutionary War, during the Civil War, and things of that nature. Post-1900s, when people like Abercrombie and Fitch and Marbles started to create items and accoutrements to be taken to the woods for wilderness recreation is what's interesting to me because those developments in that time period are really the forerunners of everything we do today. Stay with me and let's look at an antique firearm. Good afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and I'd like to introduce you to a new firearm today, I should say an old firearm today. This is the model 1889 Remington double barrel 12 gauge with external hammers. This gun was manufactured from 1889 to 1908. This particular gun, by researching the serial numbers, I can tell you that it was made sometime between 1900 and 1905. There are lots of cool features that were new and innovative to that time period in this gun, but there are also a lot of things that appeal to me now about this gun in its simplicity of both takedown and maintenance. A gun like this is not going to shoot all of the modern ammunition that's available today because it is an older firearm. You would have to shoot light loads through this type gun. A, a low brass type shell would be what I'd recommend. I'm shooting low brass shells out of it today, and I shot low brass shells to test it. It does not have Damascus barrels, it does not have to have a black powder round. It was actually advertised to be designed for nitro powders. I actually have some Remington nitro shells that I'm going to be firing through it today. I'm also going to go out and hunt with it in a little while, now that I've cleaned it and test fired it. See if I can't put a couple squirrels on the table tonight. But I wanted to introduce you to this firearm today and we'll take a closer look at it. I want to show you some of the features of this firearm and also some of the things that I looked at before purchasing this firearm for my personal collection. Because when you were buying an antique firearm, and this firearm is definitely an antique original firearm, there's lots of things that you need to look at because parts are going to be very hard to get. It's a very, there's a very small amount of moving parts within a firearm like this. That's part of why I like it. But at the same time, there are certain things that could over time break or not be functional and you need to replace those parts and parts can be very hard to find. So the better shape a gun like this is in to begin with when you purchase it, the better off you're going to be. I paid $250 for the shotgun, which is a very, very reasonable price if you go look at it on an arms list or gun dealer or someplace like that. So I'm going to walk you through the takedown of this firearm and we'll look at some of the features of this firearm as well. Then I'm going hunting but I'll shoot it for you before I go. Okay, so let's talk about the firearm for a minute. It's a double barrel, side-by-side 12 gauge, cylinder bore choke on both sides. It has two triggers. The front trigger fires the right-hand barrel. The back trigger fires the left-hand barrel. Typical beaver tail release to open the barrel. It has an ejector system built into it. It's operated when the gun opens to help eject the shells. That was new technology back then. And it has two external hammers. One of the things that I look at when I go to buy a firearm like this is first I want to make sure that everything's solid. Does it lock up well? Does it have, make a bunch of noise? Does it rattle around? Is the headspace good and tight? That's the first thing I'm going to look at. Then I'm going to start looking at furniture, make sure that there's no cracks or anything in the furniture that are going to break if I decide I'm going to fire it. It has one crack here. That looks like it's been repaired sometime in the past. That's the only cracks on the gun. The rest of it is pretty much normal wear. And we had the barrels have been more down to a grade type patina. On the back side, we have a latching system here that operates the forearm guard and also lets you take the gun down. How operational is that? Does that operate well? And do the serial numbers match? Because there's serial numbers several places on this gun. 
and if this serial number matches on all the component parts then you know you have a completely original type gun nobody's mixed and matched parts or anything like that over time and this one does all match the next thing I look at is how good does the barrel release and lock back is that good and stout does it lock good and tight yeah it does the next thing I want to find out is if these triggers are good and tight and they're not loose how good are the springs in these triggers I want to pull these hammers back and if they're nice and stiff going back they got a good spring in them on both sides then I want to look at the firing pin mechanism and the hammer strikes this and it's spring loaded and you can see the firing pin comes up and strikes your primer does that operate well does it go back and forth and retract by itself a lot of those springs get wore out over time and this gets really sloppy this one's in really really good shape in fact it's in such good shape I suspect they may have been replaced somewhere along the line but I can't tell any new markings on the gun where it may have been smithed and then I open the other side and do the same thing and check for that action make sure that when that hammer falls on that spring it's going to put that firing pin right on that primer and I want to look at those firing pins and make sure that they're not worn down and they look like they're in pretty good shape as well the trigger pull is really nice the triggers aren't loose there's no metal or any parts on the gun that are missing or, or moving around or sloppy the screws aren't stripped in anything it's got the original butt plate on it and that's important as well these older butt plates could tend to crack over time this one has the original butt plate on it it wasn't replaced with some piece of metal or anything like that and some of them have been over time or replaced with some kind of a rubber pad this one's all original so that makes it more appealing to me to take this gun down is very simple we pull out this lever and remove the forend guard or the forearm and then all we do is break the gun open and the barrel comes off now we have a straight see-through barrel that we can maintain I look inside those barrels to make sure they're not pitted that they're nice and clean before I buy it and if they are I'm in good shape there I want to make sure that the front sight is good not beat up or wore down too bad this one's in really good shape putting the gun back together is very easy all I need to do is pull on the beaver tail place it back inside and lock it down drop the forearm back on and snap it into place and that guns now ready to go again very easy takedown very easy maintenance not a lot of moving parts only disadvantage to a gun like this like I said is you don't want to shoot modern high brass type shells in this thing and I would never want to shoot slugs out of it most likely unless I reloaded them myself with black powder or a smaller charge then it would not be a problem so reloading for this gun is easy shooting commercially manufactured shells a little more difficult you always want to find low brass shells but what you can do is you could use two 20 gauge sub caliber adapters in there from short lane arms and shoot high brass 20 gauge out of it and that would be more like a low end 12 gauge load it might the pattern may be a little bit bigger but it's not going to be that much different between 20 gauge and 12 gauge so if I can put sub caliber adapters in there and shoot 20 gauge out of this I'm right back in business with modern ammunition anytime I'm test firing a gun like this for the first time I never bring it up to my face to shoot it I always shoot it down here from the hip and I generally will hold it sideways in case something blows out this direction I'm going to be protected and I wear safety glasses as well but I've already test fired this weapon so this time we're just going to shoot it normal and we'll shoot the right barrel and then the left barrel Got some good kick to her, that's for sure. You can see that ejector push those shells out to where they're easy to get out. Again, that was new technology to have that moving ejector. Beautiful, beautiful firearm. Remington model 1889 side-by-side -side external hammer 12 gauge well we stayed out there about an hour and didn't see any squirrels today a little early in the day really only about two in the afternoon probably should have waited till closer to dark but 
it is what it is. I want to go out and do a little bit of hunting and just spend some time in the woods thinking and relaxing. A couple last words on this shotgun are that double barrel shotguns like this with external hammers and two triggers give you a lot of versatility in what you can do because you can load two different loads in this gun obviously one for small game one for large game and you can be selective on which barrel you fire and when shotguns were developed with internal hammers there were still shotguns out there that had two triggers on them so that you could fire a selected barrel but once you get into shotguns that only have one trigger and two barrels or multiple barrels they generally will fire in series which means you can no longer control which round fires first and that's an important consideration when you're looking at a double barrel shotgun or a triple barrel shotgun is will this thing fire a selected barrel when I want it to or do I have to fire it in series because that drastically decreases the versatility of that fire. Well folks I appreciate you joining me out here today for a quick look and breakdown of the Remington model 1889 12 gauge shotgun side by side external hammers. I like to bring you guys videos like this once in a while just to shake it up a little bit show you something new and different that you might not see every day and some guys are out there looking for antique type firearms so it's always good to show an antique firearm and some of the things that you need to look for when purchasing one. I thank you for your views. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for my school, for our family, for our business, and for all of our instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.